We spoke to him a little bit earlier, John O'Hickey, and first introduced as saying, great result for Northland, and even though you didn't like looking at it, John O, they were just going off at the end of that match on the weekend. Yeah, it was uh, it was tough to watch that. Um, yeah, pretty pretty tough pill for us to swallow um, going down like that. Sort of felt like we were in control for a lot of that game, and probably with 20 minutes to go, um, up by six points and, and camped down on their line, we were pretty confident um, that we were going to get up by 13 and um, give ourselves a little bit of breathing room and hopefully pull away. But we obviously didn't happen, and fair play to the Tunnies. We we know they're a dangerous team, so they. They got their one opportunity and um, went the length of the field and, and then all of a sudden we were behind. So, um, yeah, as I say, it was pretty tough to swallow, but full credit to the Tunnies, I guess, for um, for taking the win. Yeah, well, look, I mean, you grew up the same time as I did, mate. We beat in Auckland and the NPC was like, Dad, that's Christmas, pal. You know, and the whole country celebrated. <laughs> I hate to say it. You know, the, you, know the, you know the score, though. Yeah, they do. They do, which is fair. Um, so, yeah, hopefully... Hopefully that doesn't happen again anytime soon. But yeah, we'll learn our lessons and get better. Okay, a couple of the players that you come, you know, back into the squad. Roger specifically. How does this actually work in terms of when the All Blacks say, "Okay, this guy rejoins"? What 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 kind of contact or instruction do you get? So we've got Roger and Angus um, Tatavau. Um, man, they're awesome, eh? So um, we had both of them with us last week. They just joined us late in the week, um, but. Yeah, both of them have been around before and they're both um, bloody good lads. So they just jump straight in and, and they fit in really quickly. So um, it's been good. And then, and then this week we've got a, a full week with them with a couple of trainings. So, um, yeah, they're in and to have their experience. And, um, and I would say they're both just good buggers as well. So um, to have them around the group is, is awesome. Do you have any specific instructions from the All Blacks uh, selection or, or, the, or the coaches about how to use them, how much game time to give them or anything like that? Nah, not really. Um, I, I'd probably have to check with um, with Ice and, uh, and Alama, but um, nah, it's pretty much just come down and give them game time. So, um, yeah, look, looking forward to them having a, a decent trot on Friday night. And so must they be as well, especially Roger, because you know he had such a, you know well everyone thought he had such a good run in Super Rugby, and then of course he hasn't been playing for the All Blacks. So, what do you see when you see him? What kind of a player do you see? Oh, he's a he's a freak, eh? Um, watching him, the the couple of games we've had um, him play for us, and then just watching him on the training paddock, like he's obviously so talented. But then just to see his attitude and um, everything towards training, like he's like that for a reason. He works so hard. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. He, it's great to have him have him involved with us, um, and he is really keen to be here with us as well. Um, he just wants to be playing footy and. Um, so yeah, to have him in our environment, but then also really wanting to be here um, and playing footy is is awesome. So I think um, yeah, over the next couple of weeks you're going to see some some pretty exciting things from Roger. Well, let's hope so because you know one of the frustrating things at the moment is not seeing him play. And Ian Foster even uh, pointed out last week. I think he said something about you know when it gets to the breakdown in attacking uh, mode, you know it, his natural instinct and around the forwards and things to do. Uh, that's where he needs to work on the most. Are you aware of that? Did you hear those comments? Do you are you are you going to implement those same things? Yeah, you see those things, but um, at the end of the day, it's his game of footy, and, and he knows what he's doing. So I, I think the best thing for him is um, is just coming back and getting game time and, and getting those actual pictures in a game, um, which is what he's keen for as well, is just to get out there on the field. So um, I mean, you can try and replicate it as much as you want it at training, but um, Nothing quite like match practice. John O'Hickey with us, Auckland assistant coach. Do you do you do you think of specific moves around him? And the sub part of that question is, what skills specifically do you think that he really has, which you know may elevate him? Um, yep, you do. Um, you definitely you'd be silly not to try and think of, of little plays and, and ways to get him involved. Um, I mean, yeah, you, you just want him to get his hands on the ball as much as as. You can. Um, last week versus Tunnies, we probably didn't didn't manage that in the second half when he went on. Um, but obviously, he's got so many strengths. He's um, his speed and um, power, and then obviously his footwork at the line. So, um, yeah, we'll be hopefully looking to utilise that on Friday night. Um, but yeah, that he's, he's got so many strengths. So then, as I said before as well, like 
his work ethic and his intensity around everything he does um, is just yeah, awesome to have in the team. Do you see him as a second five, or is there another position that you think he could play as well? Because remember, he did play fullback in league. Uh, honestly, like a, a guy as talented as that, you could you could probably chuck him anywhere. But um, yeah, we've got him as a as second five, and um, that's where he's been playing. So um, yeah, but as I say, you could you could slot him anywhere in the back line. He's he's got freakish skills, and um, that could could go in most positions in the back line. So, um, but yeah, obviously, twelve is where he's he's having a crack at at the moment. So um, yeah, I think he he goes well there. Well, how long how long does it take, or 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 how easy or not is it to come from where you've just been training and then playing game? And like, if you give him a full run this weekend and that, how easy is it to adapt to that, or 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 is it really easy? Uh, yeah, I reckon it's that's not too hard. Um, obviously, being in the All Blacks environment, they train their training to be fairly intense, um, and there won't be any issues with fitness or anything like that. So. Um, yeah, I think he'll he'll slot back in pretty easily. Yeah, he played played for us a couple of weeks ago, had one week off, and then was straight back into it last weekend off the bench. So, um, I yeah, I don't see those boys having having too many issues with with jumping straight back in. Then, do you see him getting eighty minutes this week? I don't know. <laughs> As I say before, you'd have to have to ask the big boss that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we go. How's the competition this year in terms of the evenness of the sides and everything else? Is there any any team that stands out bigger and better than the others? Yeah, it is real even, eh? Um, everyone's everyone's beating everyone. I think everyone's there isn't a team in the competition that's lost uh, that's won every game yet. So obviously, in our pool, Canterbury's um, sitting pretty good at the top there, and they're looking really strong. Um, and then. And the other pool, Waikato's at the top, so um, massive challenge for us this weekend. Um, but yeah, as you say, it's sort of it's really even, so um, it's it's making for a good competition. And then the the final, well, the introduction of the quarterfinals at the end of the year, um, going to be a little bit different as well. So um, ah, it's exciting. Yeah, and it's just, I suppose, it matter now with no international rugby this weekend. I mean, the weather you know, has been pretty bloody good apart from the last couple of days, but, you know, getting people out there, getting them into the grounds again. It's so difficult to fill Eden Park for these kind of things. Are you, are you allowed to look outside and think, hey, could we take it to a smaller ground? Has that ever been discussed? Ooh, uh, pass. Pass, that's um, probably you'd above to... your pay rate as well. Yeah, okay, I understand. That's, that's above my pay grade as well, man, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously it's pretty tough to try and fill Eden Park. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. At the same time, it's, it's cool to be able to play there as well. I know the boys love it. Um, but yeah, it would be nice. I mean, yeah, it's tough, tough to fill it up. But um, yeah, as I say, at the same time, it is, a, it is a cool place to play rugby, even if it's not a full crowd. All right then, yeah, big game this weekend, massive rivalry. It's got all that history to it, which is so cool about playing the, the cow mob, isn't it? Yeah, Battle of the Bombays. Um, that should be good. Um, played in a couple of them over the years, a few years back, and um, nah, it should be awesome on Friday night. We're obviously hurting um, after last weekend's result. Um, so you come Friday night, we'll be we'll be all fired up and, and ready to go.